Hello, my friends. I'm Rich Larson, and I'm the IRC Tire Guy. Today, we're breaking down a challenging technique that's often mistaken for another. We're talking the double blip technique on elevated or undercut logs and ledges, or the zap technique. Now, there's a lot of confusion surrounding these techniques. The double blip or roll up technique and the zap or jap zap technique are often confused for being the same thing. Although they are very similar and they use a lot of the same throttle, clutch, and body positioning, they're applied to totally different obstacles. I've done a full breakdown on the double blip technique in the past. Check the link in the description for the full breakdown. But let me give a quick refresher on what exactly the double blip technique is. The double blip technique is something I use all the time when I'm riding. This is the best technique to tackle those rocks, logs, boulders, and cliffs. It also helps you hone that throttle and clutch control that's so important in hard enduro situations. The double blip technique is exactly what it sounds like. Two distinct blips of the throttle and clutch to propel you and your bike over an obstacle. One blip and slip of the clutch and throttle to get that front tire in the air. Then a second blip and slip as soon as the front tire makes contact with the obstacle. Depending on the height of the obstacle, this second blip is usually heavier with RPMs and clutch to then load the flywheel and build up that kinetic energy within your engine to propel you over the obstacle with traction as soon as you release the clutch. Again, check the full breakdown of the double blip technique and the loading the flywheel technique by hitting the links in the description below. Understanding and mastering those techniques will be extremely helpful in those hard enduro situations. Now, let's talk where the double blip and zap techniques vary. When performing a double blip or roll up technique, the rear tire completely drives into the obstacle and then tracks up and over. When performing the zap technique, your rear tire completely leaves the ground before the obstacle. This is one of the best techniques for conquering those elevated logs and undercut ledges. If you attempt to only use the double blip technique, again, where the rear tire drives into the obstacle, you're more likely to get hung up on that frame or linkage in the process. So I wanna give a few tips that may help in learning that zap technique. Let's start with using a trials bike. The trials bikes are a lot lighter, more flickable, and more controllable. All these factors and more will help make learning this technique a lot easier. But if you don't have a trials bike, that's okay. I personally learned most of my hard enduro techniques on the full sized machine. So it is 100% possible. Today, I'll be showing this technique on both machines so you can have a well-rounded example. Now, the main focus is finding the right timing between throttle, clutch, body position, and of course, suspension, compression, and rebound. You'll approach the obstacle very similar to the way you'd approach a double blip. But with the double blip, you're almost driving through the obstacle. With your front tire punching about three quarters of the way into the face of the obstacle, then rolling up and through it. With the zap technique, I like to almost think I'm dropping my front tire on to the face of the obstacle, then propelling myself up and over. I've found the earlier I do the first blip of the throttle and clutch, the more reaction my suspension gives me when dropping on to the obstacle. You're looking for as much suspension compression and rebound as possible to help your rear tire leave the ground before the obstacle and land as high up on the obstacle as possible. Notice the variation in my body position on the zap technique compared to the double blip. First, moving back to assist the front tire up into the air, just like with the double blip, but then bending my knees for extra compression and exploding up and forward further and faster compared to the double blip. This quick transition forward in body position helps give that extra suspension, compression, and rebound, propelling the bike up instead of forward. 
it also adds an extra amount of traction to the rear tire for that added assistance in explosiveness. Then, as the rear tire is making its contact with the obstacle, my focus is transitioning my weight back to the rear tire, holding pressure on the pegs and traction with very little throttle over the obstacle. If you're finding your rear tire is losing traction or spinning on top of the obstacle, you most likely aren't loading the flywheel and RPMs enough on the second blip before you're even in the obstacle. Remember, heavy throttle before the obstacle, very little through the obstacle. We're still focused on two separate blips and slips of the clutch and throttle, but I find the separation of the two blips and the increased RPMs of the second blip to be much more important during the zap technique. You're really relying on the flywheel and engine's inertia to help you get that propulsion over the obstacle. This technique, again, is a lot about timing. You're combining the loading of RPMs and flywheel, the suspension, compression, and rebound, as well as the transition of body weight back, forward, and back again to propel you up and over any undercut obstacle with ease. A few extra tips I can give is draw a line in the dirt before the obstacle as a visual representation on where you want to lift the front tire. This will help with your time as well as get that front tire in the air a bit earlier. Also, try setting up a camera and film yourself to study the mistakes you're making. And of course, more than anything, put in the time. I still do at least 50 double blips and zaps every day. That's what it takes to master any technique. If you're enjoying the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram, at IRCMoto, and my personal Instagram page, at RichLarson511. And until next time, keep shredding.